Hi, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the Graham Johnson Cultural Arts Endowment's about, but I also wanted to give you a little story that we would have, and I used to use it quite often with our girls' basketball team, which I, I coached the uh, high school basketball girls for a while, and as well as the middle school, and this used to be part of the story for both of those groups. And what it is, is it relates back to personal experience in my life, but what it was about was a rude awakening I got when I was 19 years old, but it was an awakening I needed when I was 19 years old. I was working in the military, this was during the Vietnam era thing, and one of the, I was a hospital corpsman, I went to for training and it was in what was called a neuropsychiatric technician at Bethesda Naval Hospital up in Bethesda, Maryland. And as I was going through the, the training sessions, one of the things that happened is on Monday mornings we would get assigned patients that we would be working with that week and on Monday we'd find out who had been admitted to the, to the psychiatric ward. Well, I came in one Monday morning and one of the things that had happened and everybody was talking a little buzz about was there was a very high ranking psychiatrist who had also undergone psychoanalysis and he was a very high ranking person within the whole United States military structure. And the problem was he was there for a depressive reaction. And so immediately we're all sitting around and they start, we have our little group of people and there might have been eight or 10 of us and they start assigning patients. Well, we're waiting for this patient's name to come up and as they go down the row, each uh, corpsman at that point was finding out who their patient was. And I noticed we hadn't got to this psychiatrist, psychoanalyst that had just uh, been admitted. And it got down only two people left, and it was me and another person. And they gave that person their assignment, and there wasn't but one left. I said, uh-oh, I got problems. Uh, and I said, what am I going to say to a psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I ended up with that patient. And so as I remember walking down the hallway, I went to his room, and I walked in, and I had no earthly idea what I was going to say other than the man was sad, and so what can you do? One of the things that I, I just started talking in your standard pitch, blah, 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 I know he's heard it a million one times, he's done it a million one times, and finally, somewhat, maybe two or three, four, five minutes into the conversation, he sort of cut me off, and he goes, Mr. Johnson, he goes, uh, how you like the military? And I go, eh, I don't like it, I can't wait to get out of the military. He goes, hmm. He says, now why did you come into the military? I said, well, I want to go to college, and I want to go to college and play basketball. And he goes, well, why didn't you go to college and play basketball? I said, well, it was easy. Uh, my grades were terrible. I had like a 69.5 grade point average, and it took a 70 to graduate. He goes, ah. Uh. He goes, so are you learning much here in the military? I said, well, I'm just sort of hanging, biding my time. He goes, Mr. Johnson, I want to talk to you. He says, let me tell you what life is. He says, basically, life is a string. He said, you can take a string, and it has multicolors on it. He says, what happens to most people in life is no matter what color they are, if they're yellow and blue's next, they're not living yellow. They're living to get to blue. But the minute they get to blue, that's not good enough. Then they're living to get to green. And you can see the progression as you go down. He says, the problem is most people don't wake up until they're way down here at the end of the string. He says, when they get to the end of the string, they look at it and they look at so much of their life they wasted just to get to the next color. He says, you're doing that, Mr. Johnson. You're constantly not living up to your potential wherever you are because you're planning for the next thing in your life. I listened to him. I realized I hadn't done anything to help him. I walked out of that patient room and I was angry. <laughs> I was going, my gosh. That, you know, I didn't help him. And it was frustration because I knew I hadn't helped him. But anyway, I got home that, I went back to the barracks that night and I started thinking. I said, you know what, the, one of the reasons I got angry, this is the benefit of being a psychiatric technician, you wonder why do you feel the way you feel? 
because if you can't figure that out, you can't figure out how to help other people. But I was saying, you know what? One of the reasons I'm angry is I'm angry at myself. He hit the nail on the head. That is the way I'm living my life. And it, for me, it was that point in time. Well, not immediately then, maybe a couple, three weeks later. I said, you know what? I need to start getting my act together. Because I don't want to be laying on my deathbed, looking backwards, wishing I'd had enough sense to figure out you better live every day for, for what you can. You don't plan for the next day. I'm not saying totally. But what you do is you realize you cherish the moment and do the best you can. You don't have to be the best, just the best you can. And in basketball, we have situations where I hear people come out and tell the kids, give it 110%. Can't give 110%. You can give 100%. The truth is, kids in school, you can't. Give 100% to everybody all the time. Nobody can do that. What you do is you do the best you can at that moment in time. And for many of you, it's going to be 80% is the best you can do at that time. But guess what? That's good enough. But that's part of the motto, and that's part of what we're doing with the Graham Johnson Cultural Arts Endowment. We're trying to teach people, and it doesn't have to be kids, it's people. Do the best you can when you can. All of us have one of these strings. We all live the same process. You may know part of the Graham Johnson is our son didn't get but about that far on his string. You assume you're going to have a long string. It may not happen. So live what you've got. Now one of the things I want to make now and offer, and I hope this works, because once my daughter heard the story the first time, I think she was in the seventh grade, she started wearing one of these all the time around her wrist, constantly. And she's worn it for six, seven years now. If you would like one of our strings, you notice I have some, you'll see at the bottom of the screen is an address to send. Just send me, or you can send me an email, but send me to the address and send me a, and I almost, the reason I'm saying this is a self-addressed stamped envelope. <laughs> but I will make sure you get a string but this is one of the things that's motivated a lot of our people, and it's one of the things we try to emphasize with the Graham Johnson Cultural Arts Endowment. Thanks for watching it. Get in touch with me. I'd be glad to share with you. Appreciate it.